Estonia, a country 45,000 square kilometers in size and home to one and a half million people. It already has a place in history as the region of the Soviet Empire, where the changeover to a market economy began. The Estonian capital Tallinn and other large towns Tartu, Narva and Pärnu were well-known European trading cities as long ago as the 14th century. They all belonged to one of the largest trading blocks in Europe at the time, the Hanseatic League. In the year 1346, the Hanseatic League granted Tallinn warehousing rights, which meant that all trade between Russia and Western Europe had to pass through the Estonian capital. By the end of the 17th century, the majority of Estonians were literate. In 1918, this nation of one million people established their own nation state. In 1940, Estonia was occupied by the Soviet Union, but the end of the Red Empire itself began in 1988, when Estonia was the first republic to declare autonomy. Today, Estonia has a democratically elected parliament and the only right of centre government in Eastern Europe. By the Middle Ages, Estonia was placed at the crossroads of established trade routes. Nowadays, Tallinn's new port brings an old tradition up to date. With its favourable position, it is actually the most northerly ice-free port in the Baltic, and its ability to accommodate any ship which can enter the Baltic Sea. In 1992, 4.7 million tonnes of cargo were handled by the port of Tallinn. Integration in the former USSR's railway network offers real opportunities for transit trade between Russia and the West. After all, the St. Petersburg region, with its 8 million consumers, is only a few hundred kilometers away from the port of Tallinn. The Via Baltica is a highway currently being developed to provide the shortest route linking Scandinavia and Russia with Central Europe. This too passes through Estonia. The Financial Times newspaper gave Estonian Air the accolade of being the only reliable airline based in the territory of the former USSR. And within a short period of time, well-known airlines like Lufthansa, SAS and Finnair have established regular services linking Tallinn with a number of European centres. Thanks to a successful economic policy founded on its stable national currency, Estonia has in a single year succeeded in reducing inflation from 20% a month to 3% a month. Estonian national currency is fully backed by our foreign reserves, which mainly consist from gold and Deutsche Mark, and by this feature it differs from other currencies in our neighbour countries, and this mechanism has created a sufficient trust and confidence to Estonian crown among Estonian businessmen, among ordinary people and also among foreign businessmen. Even during the period of Soviet occupation, Estonia was a developed manufacturing region, renowned for its trained workforce. Despite the high quality of this workforce, the Estonian workers' average annual wage is only 700 US dollars. Food, household goods and accommodation are relatively inexpensive, which keeps down the cost of living. Cheap but qualified labour with a European mentality is one of the main attractions for investors in Estonia. The political and economic changes which have taken place have also influenced the structure of Estonia's trade. One and a half years ago, 90% of production was exported to Russia. Now, only 30%. Large Western firms are already established here. The infrastructure has been developed too. You can find good telephone and fax facilities and a suitable hotel. And your embassy is probably here as well. I've been here for more than a year and a half now, and I think that the best way to sum it up is that this country is rapidly turning into a success story. I think it's going to be the first part of the former Soviet Union which really successfully converts itself economically, politically, in all other ways into a Western country. 
The Estonian parliament has in a short time passed a large number of laws which are needed for a non-communist state and economy to function. When we are looking about on our legislation, then we can say that in the nearest future there will be a new law about privatization and it will be much more flexible than we have it today. It will be much easier for a uh, foreign investor to understand what happens in Estonia, where he has to go and to whom he has to speak. Like all the former Eastern Bloc countries, where all property belonged to the state, Estonia has embarked on a process of privatization. Estonian Troihand, Eesti Erastamisetta Vette, was founded in cooperation with German privatization specialists and in November 1992 it published around the world a list of the first 38 state companies which were offered for sale. So why invest in Estonia? Let's just go over the five main reasons. A stable hard currency. Cheap but trained labour force. The foreign investor can buy land. A favourable geographical position. A tradition of contacts with both East and West. With my background of experience at Treuhandanstalt in Ge Eastern Germany and other Eastern Bloc countries, Estonia for investors worldwide is definitely the five-star place for going ahead with investments in privatization. A businessman always wants to maximize his opportunities and minimize his risk. So why not establish your business in a five-star country? Invest in Estonia.